Kirk Miller here from AEM Electronics, or should I say AEM EV. What's behind me is a 1971 Pinsgauer 710M. It's a, actually Austrian people mover uh, used in the military from the 70s forward. And we've selected this vehicle to do an EV conversion on. So we're, we're very excited about this. And the, the goal here is to actually show you how our EV products work, the supervisor position of the VCU, and all the other devices that we've launched with our PDU, our dash, and our keypad, and how it's gonna integrate into what's an EV conversion. Many of the conversions out there are done on earlier iteration vehicles. So they're typically lower power and very analog. Um, we're going to bring the digital and the EV to this, and I'm just going to sort of walk through this vehicle and give you some of the reasons why we chose this, and then how our products are actually going to integrate. Really excited about it. So check this out. So this, as mentioned, 71 Pinsgauer, originally came with a 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder air-cooled engine that laid on its side, and like a lot of earlier vehicles from the 60s and 70s, it wasn't big on power. One of the great things about an EV conversion or an EV motor is that you have that 100% torque on demand. That's awesome. The downside is controlling that. Your foot motion from here to here, 100% torque on demand, can mean a couple of challenges. One is controlling the vehicle out of the hole, off the line, or B, the drivetrain itself, it wasn't designed to take this much power. We've talked about other conversions. You've seen some of the things we've done already. Steve Huff, 2,000 horsepower dragster. The, the Cobra 1400, over 1,500 horsepower. We're talking about all these big numbers all the time in the EV world. We don't need hundreds or thousands of horsepower. We need 100 horsepower. That's what this came with, 96 horsepower. And I'm gonna walk you through this. So if you check out the drivetrain, actually, let me roll it out from underneath the vehicle. This is really, really cool. You have a torque tube it's massive that connects the front and rear transfer cases and the transaxles themselves. There's two things that you struggle with when you do an EV. Where do you put the motor and how are you gonna bring it in and how much fab work has to be done. In some cases, people have these really cool caliper kits. We're trying to maintain the factory drum brakes on this. Another really cool feature was this. So the engine sat here and it laid on its side. So the, the cylinder head sat underneath the driver's feet, the crankshaft underneath the passenger seat, the transmission right behind that, into a drive shaft, this little transfer that runs into the drivetrain. This is your high and low range right here. This is perfect. What's gonna sit right here is a motor with a step down. So the electric motor will sit right in here. We've got a factory bracket. The amount of fabrication required because you have factory motor mounts right here that will bracket up to accommodate the motor in this case. So it'll fit right under the factory location where the transmission and engine sat. And then the OEM drive shift into the transfer case will be coupled up right behind that. You're not fabricating or engineering a lot of brackets and parts. This vehicle is gonna demonstrate our products and how they work and how the VCU is, is the, the overall supervisor over the, over the powertrain, right? But we're also gonna use it for events and it's, it's a pretty big and pretty heavy vehicle. So some of the concerns are with battery packs. So we have belly pans and we have the floor of the transfer where we can put all this and distribute the weight really nicely. But even at that, if we're out at, a, at an Overlander event or a Honda day or wherever, we will have a long journey with this. And one of the things we don't want to worry about is range anxiety. I might get some sticks thrown at me for this, but what we're going to do is we actually have a four kilowatt generator that's carb exempt that will sit right where the factory engine sat. And we're going to use the factory fuel tank to feed it. So you have a carb exempt generator that will watch the, the VCU and the, our BMS will be looking at the, the battery conditions all the time. And if the batteries fall below a certain threshold while in use or while just sitting and have other devices running, showing off the vehicle, the generator can actually kick on automatically and start trickle charging back up the battery packs. A really cool feature. Um, and it's only, we're only doing this again to show how flexible the VCU is. So it's not, really a hybrid, but it does have what we'll call as a range extender, or for me, it just takes range anxiety out of the equation. It's a, it's a, it's a fun project. We're excited to show you as we go through this, you know, some of the other steps that we'll have. Uh, in integrating a generator from an RV, uh, the electric motor package, and then the rest of the drivetrain and some of the other things that are going to be cool inside the vehicle using the keypad, our dash, and our PDUs to control other devices like the cooling pumps the cooling fans and all these other things. And we're even talking about putting AC and heat in this thing. So we're gonna to try to figure out how to seal up the cabin to make it a little more enjoyable for 
either anyone who's just test driving it to see how it really works, or for us using it in the field at events to just make it more fun, more comfortable. Uh, I want to step up to the body to show you some of the cool things about that. Battery packs is one of the big challenges, so they're, they're fairly sizable um, for a long-range battery pack. So we have options here. One is, because this is a people carrier, we have a floor area that's nice and wide and runs you know, two-thirds the length of the vehicle that would allow us to put a battery pack across the floor. So we put the battery pack in here and it really won't, it won't take up too much space and you still have your seats in there so you can have people sitting in the back if you want. We'll put a nice floor over the top of it, like an old school pickup truck bed or something like that. The other option for us, we have belly pans on this side to accommodate. Originally they were accommodate the battery packs and then just storage for gear. Uh, so the front one was the batteries. Now this was a 24 volt system, so it had two big batteries sitting in this base. And these run in pretty deep and they're pretty sizable. Same on this one, they're similar in size. So we could use this space as well, because it's engineered from, from original to hold a lot of weight. So we could put battery packs in this area. So we're still debating on which, which area we're gonna go with. The floor definitely lends itself to a larger battery pack, so we might go in that direction. Um, just so we, again, trying to get some range out of this thing so we don't have the range anxiety that a lot of people are challenged with. And then, uh, you know, not having a vehicle that you can enjoy and not worry about things like that makes it just that much more pleasurable to, to send out into the field for demos. Some of the cool features right out of the factory, crazy drop limiter straps that were actually steel, <laughs> which I've never seen. So that, that limits the vehicle rotation, so that's kind of cool. And then up in the front, again, the simplicity of this vehicle Simple drag link for suspension, so we have a lot of room up in the front of the vehicle. All that takes place forward of the, of the axle, so you don't have to worry about your, your generator or any of your drive mechanisms being in, impinged by the, the factory uh, steering mechanisms or linkages. I mentioned the generator system that we'll have, a uh, four kilowatt gener generator, and we need air to come through, so lucky for us, the factory air inlet is gonna sit right in front of where the generator is. And if you look underneath here, this is this box is the mock-up of the, the generator itself to fit right where the factory engine sat, and the fa it fits right under the factory engine cover. I'll show you a shot inside as well. But so these, we have the, you'll see these cardboard boxes throughout several videos, and all they are is mock-ups. Just so we're sure, these are all oversized of any device, so we make sure that we have the space required to accommodate any device we're gonna put in place, whether it be a generator, a VCU, a motor. You'll see in the next shot a bunch of cardboard boxes taped all over the place on this thing, and it's strictly a mock-up for us to see where everything's gonna lay out, real size, real, real size in the, in the field. So you can see underneath again, plenty of room for the drivetrain. I talked about the motor. This is where the motor's gonna sit once that drivetrain is back up in place, and then the generator will sit right out in front of it. Like I said, we're really excited about it. We were fortunate to have the factory fuel tank. I believe it's a 20 gallon fuel cell for fuel tank. So that'll run a generator for days on end without worrying about having to fuel up. So this can be out in the field, having a good time for days and days and days without have to worry about a recharge when it's just sitting idling or sitting at an event. It can actually have the generator running and topping off the batteries. Again, nice little feature to have. <laughs> the interior is somewhat sparse right now. The seats are in the back. Um, we've removed a lot of the parts inside. You can see the big engine cover that sits between the, the driver and the passenger. Um, the dash layout, uh, it, it will change dramatically because it will have a couple of AEM uh, CD7s or CD5s depending on how the layout works, giving you all the information about the drivetrain, the generator, you know, vehicle speed, battery conditions, we'll have all that information, you know, just at a glance. Everything will be right in front of us. She's used, but she, I think she's cool. I think it's gonna be a eye catcher and a great demonstrator of our products. I mean, if we can electrify this thing, you know, what can't we electrify? So on this side, you'll see, you know, she needs some interior detail work, but that's not a big challenge. Cool features, rifle holders. Everything's rag top, so we'll have parts coming in for that. Uh, the transfer case, high, low range, lockers, are all still fully functional, they're hydraulic. So that's kind of cool. This One of the cool things on this vehicle is because it was a military vehicle and it, they saw real action, everything was done so it was on the fly, meaning it was a synchronized shift 
So you could actually, there's a, these are actually operating hydraulic. So these will actually engage and disengage high range lockers, you know, things like that. So you can actually do it while you're on the fly. Pretty cool feature set for a vehicle from 1971. That's sort of the overview of where we are right now with this vehicle. As mentioned, you know, several times throughout this, we're really excited about this and have you along to see how we progress with this. Hopefully, you know, in the not too distant future, the goal is to be November rolling with this. We'll be rolling around before Thanksgiving. So should be a fun ride.